Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video. Today we're going to be doing a quick update on KX826 as recently there was a press announcement released by Kintor Pharmaceuticals. Kintor Pharmaceutical announced its phase 3 long-term safety trial for KX826, a topical anti-androgen inhibitor for androgenetic alopecia, and it successfully met its primary endpoint. This was an open-label study that spanned 52 weeks or one year across 16 clinical sites in China and used 0.5% topical concentration of KX826, and it was applied twice daily. The primary focus was on treatment emergent adverse events, so they wanted to see if there were any sort of sexually related side effects and other sort of side effects as well that could be related to the KX826 treatment. Now, there were no deaths that were connected, or no deaths at all, that concerned KX826, so that's good, no one was dying. Phenomenal. And there was no case of drug-related sexual dysfunction that related to KX826, so this highlights a very strong safety profile. So, KX826 is way better than RU584, also known as PSK3841, because we have so much clinical evidence on its safety, at the very least. RU584, we don't even have its efficacy data or safety data. That's been vaulted away, and it's very, very hard to even get knowledge about it. But in any case, concerning the efficacy outcomes, they were kind of promising. After 52 weeks, 46% of the patients had hair density increase of 10 or more hairs per square centimeter, and 20% saw gains of 20 or more hairs per square centimeter. Improvements in hair width and overall growth were also statistically significant, where investigator-assessed improvements were seen in 53% of men and 48.4% of women, and the self-assessment showed a similar trend. However, we do have to mention that this trial did not have a placebo or control group, and if you actually think about it, this is a major... I don't want to say red flag, but it is a major limitation because when you have an open label design, especially, you know, in this case, it doesn't have a placebo control group, you're inviting a lot of bias, right? Especially when it comes to the self-assessment and the investigator assessment. The investigators, you know, might have some sort of bias in seeing the treatment actually working because they might be aware of the treatment group and therefore they might have you know, undetected preconceived notions about that particular treatment. Maybe they saw, you know, positive results done on controlled trials beforehand, and now they're sort of bringing that bias up again in their minds unconsciously. So mm, it's not really a good design for proving efficacy, but when it comes to safety, that's a different question because the overwhelming amount of clinical evidence from all of the phase three trial datas and even phase two and phase one, the ample amounts of KX826 studies have shown that this molecule is somewhat safe at a 0.5% concentration, maybe even a 1% concentration. But let's be real here. This isn't better than finasteride. This isn't better than dutasteride. It probably isn't better than minoxidil, but it would serve a different purpose other than minoxidil, right? Minoxidil is the growth stimulant. KX826 would be the you know, the DHT blocker, as people would try to say, like kind of like RU is, right? Where it's blocking the androgen receptor. Well, supposedly, ostensibly, that's the case. So truly, I see this as the safer alternative to people that use RU58841, because at least we have, again, a safety profile for KX826 pyrolutamide. And it might be of interest for people who don't want to use oral or topical finasteride or oral or topical dutasteride. Although, I would still urge you to try to look into using either oral or topical 5 alpha reductase inhibitors like finasteride and dutasteride. Because those medications have the most proven efficacy and they've been on the market for decades at this point. And... You know, it's evident from the studies that they actually work, and KX826 admittedly has a long way to prove itself. But yeah, we just need further randomized double-blind trials for the molecule overall. But right now, I'm more interested in the outcome of their KX826 1% topical concentration study, because this study is going to be a 
multi-center double-blind randomized placebo-controlled trial, and the outcomes for this can be monumental in terms of definitively proven that a 1% concentration would be very efficacious in treating androgenetic alopecia. So there's a lot of promise there. Let's hope that the trial actually goes well and we do get some efficacious results. Now, this clinical trial has already started because Kintor actually made an announcement December 2024, literally, I think it was on the 31st of December 2024, that starting in the new year, they want to actually enroll members in this clinical trial, the 1% topical concentration for androgenetic alopecia. Now, this trial will involve 25 clinical research centers and aims to enroll 666 patients over the course of five months with a 24 treatment period followed by a one-month safety observation and is expected to conclude by the end of 2025. So the preclinical data seems to suggest that a higher concentration will be better than the lower 0.5% version. So this might potentially enhance the efficacy while maintaining a strong safety profile. But personally, I think they should have pushed the envelope a bit more here, maybe testing at 2% or even 5%. But in any case, there is a lot of promise with this molecule as an androgenetic alopecia treatment. And as I mentioned earlier, it's technically a cosmeceutical right now. So conveniently, you can buy this as a cosmeceutical from the CoShine website. Check the description below. The green and blue bottles, I'm pretty sure they're at a 0.5% concentration. And it is my personal understanding that the purple bottle is a 1% concentration. Anyway, I personally find the spray bottle kind of annoying. So what I, you know, do, because I have gotten these bottles myself just to see what's going on with them. I unscrew the bottle, right? take the cap off, the spray cap off, and then I use a one milliliter pipette to extract the solution. And then you can put it on the scalp and then use the tip or the side of the pipette to kind of spread the solution over the scalp. And then at the end, you can just screw back on the spray nozzle and then put back on the cap. And I'm going to try to show a video here on the screen just to show you and illustrate what's going on. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace out.